Good morning and welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today, my special guest is Congressman Phil Rowe. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Linda. Thanks for having me. A lot to talk about. We'll see how far we can get <laughs> because there's so much information, so many things I want to talk to you about. But first, I want to touch on veterans. And I know that's something near and dear to your heart. And you yes. are chairman of the Veterans House Committee. That's correct. Okay. So tell me, what's going on with veterans? I know you're concerned about their suicide rates and, and their cost of living and, and things like this. So Let me run through just uh, okay. uh, the last year, uh, 21 or two months or so. And okay, that'd be one of great. the things that we got from uh, President Trump was an, he, he told us, and he has a, a group of people inside the White House, policy people, that we meet with very frequently. And, and, and I told him, told that group of policy people, this is what I would like to see. I've been on that committee for eight years. I understood it very well. I am a veteran, so um, I've, I've been, been there and done that. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, and I know how our veterans were treated after Vietnam. I'm a Vietnam era veteran, although I served in Korea during Vietnam. Um, I, I saw how our group was treated and it was wrong. And fortunately, our country doesn't do that anymore. So I told my staff, we've been given a unique opportunity to be able to make things better. And how many chances in your life do you get to do that for mm -hmm. millions of veterans and future veterans? So I said, you better put your belt buckle on, we're gonna work. We have passed this year over 70 bills that we passed over to the Senate directly affecting veterans. That's a lot of work, and 29 of those have been signed into law. And let me go through some of the more major ones we've done, and All if right. we get a chance to talk about some of the lesser ones, I'll talk about that. Um, one was the Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act. The, the VA secretary came to us and said, look, I can't fire anybody. And the VA is an organization, now it's hard to believe but there are 370,000 people that work for the VA. More people work for the VA than work for the United States Navy. Wow. That's how big it is. So he couldn't do that easily. And look, most employees do a great job. We are so blessed here locally to have Mountain Home VA. I hear great things about it every day of my life that I'm mm -hmm. out traveling. But that's not the case everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we passed that bill. So that now the president can do that and was signed into law. Number two, we know that the veterans' disability claims were taking forever. I had one of my best friends die mm. waiting. He was an Agent Orange exposure. He died. It took me two years after he died to get his benefit. I see veterans that are waiting five, six, seven years, and we realize what a horrible mm. problem and burden this was on families. So we passed a bill to help speed that up. It will go live uh, in February of 2019. For those veterans watching us out here that are stuck in that rut, there's a program you can get into now called the RAMP program, R-A-M-P, the mm -hmm. Rapid Appeals Modernization Program, and it has really sped it up, and there are three lanes you can get into, so talk to your veteran service officer about how to do that. Number three, th and this one is a bill that, that I really, really am passionate about because of education. I realize that uh, after World War II, Harry Comer, an American Legion uh, member, sit sat down and hand wrote the first GI Bill. And for those out there that don't know what that is, it really educated a generation of people after World War II. It's scholarships, basically, for you to go to college or to a technical school to learn and improve your knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and they really, the veterans after World War II transformed this country. That was Harry L. Comer who mm -hmm. did that. Well. I used a GI Bill when I got out of the Army in 1975 and 76 I used it, it paid me $300 a month and for two years. And I, could, I was through with my education at that point. But it sunsetted at 10. Um, the new post 9-11 GI Bill is a fabulous benefit, but it sunsetted you could no longer use it after 15 years. So if you were 25 mm -hmm. and you're 41 and your, your job went to uh, overseas or something, mm -hmm. you couldn't use it anymore. Hmm. It's fully paid for now. You can use this GI Bill the rest of your life. Number two is if you have shed blood for this country, if you've earned a Purple Heart, I don't mm -hmm. care if you earned it on the first day, and, and I'll share with you a very short story. I went to a high school reunion uh, about six weeks ago, and I found out that a young man that I went to elementary school with, I went to high school with, and then we went in our different directions as many times high school students do, was killed the first day he got into Vietnam, first day. And Bob Perry, I want people to know what his name is, a mm -hmm. friend of mine, knew him well. Um, so if, if you're wounded now, if you only served a certain length of time, you didn't get the full, full benefit. Today, if you shed blood for this country, you get the full benefit. 
rest of your life. Good. And for guardsmen and reservists, I didn't serve. I was drafted, so I didn't go in an arm. We did just drafted as many people as they needed. But today, the, the guard and reserves are called up just like active duty people are. Mm -hmm. uh, the 278, they're in Ukraine right now from our area right here. They've been deployed three or four times since I've been in Congress. So those men and women also got enough benefit. Um, and we fully funded the, the VA uh, Choice Act, which is how veterans get their care outside. Probably the most transformative piece of veterans legislation we passed is called the VA Mission Act. This, this was a bipartisan bill that does three things. One is how, we, how veterans get their care outside the VA. And to show you the, how complicated this was, I had to try to write a bill that was good for rural America and for urban America. I'm going to give you an example. I was in uh, Medford, Oregon uh, about a year ago from now. It's already snowing on Mount Hood. Um, so, and that congressman, Greg Walden's congressional district, has more square miles than the state of Tennessee does. Mm. And they don't have a VA hospital there. Mm. So we had to write a bill where veterans could get their care outside the VA and inside the VA. Number two, uh, and this one is extremely important, catastrophically injured veterans post 9-11, let's say uh, they lost an arm or a leg or whatever, and their mm -hmm. spouse took care of them at home, mm -hmm. uh, they got a, uh, the spouse, whether it's a man or a woman, got a stipend. We said, you're not working in the, out in the community, so you're not getting benefits and so forth. Mm -hmm. So what we will do is we will pay you because we think it's better for your spouse, it's better for the VA, it's, costs, it's all better. You don't have somebody institutionalized when they can stay home. We also provide health insurance for them, but only for post 9-11. Uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, people like me, we couldn't get those benefits. Mm. We've now extended that benefit to all veterans that are ca that are service connected disabled, so you have to be d a disabled veteran. Wow. Um, the the other thing we're working on, and you mentioned this very near and dear to my heart, are veteran suicides. <clears throat> we held a hearing uh, before we left to come home on the on the, the uh, October break to campaign on veteran suicides. And in 2003, we were spending over two billion dollars a year on that therapy today on that program today over uh, eight billion but the problem I had was we still have the needle had moved we still have 20 veteran suicides per day that's, wow. that's an incredible tragedy in this country so I said what we're going to do is we're going to deep dive this issue and we're going to find out mm -hmm. what programs work and what don't and are they scalable can we put them all across the country Another uh, hearing I've already had and we're going to deep dive in next year is our veterans homelessness. Um, we're spending seven and a half billion dollars on that program and it has moved down. I was, I was happy to see that there was a 5% reduction, but I don't know whether it was because of the economy getting better or, or whether it was because of programs the VA is actually doing. Oh, okay. So we're, we're going to find out about those two things. And then lastly, a um, lot to talk about in the VA, but lastly, yeah. uh, uh, it, we, we've, we're going to transform, and th this will be transformative if we can work it out, a virtual lifetime electronic health record. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means when you're a recruit, like I know you're very, we talked off camera about your son being in the Air Force, very mm -hmm. proud of him, gone to Air Force Academy. It's an 18-year-old cadet or an 18-year-old recruit. We enter you into an electronic health record, and then we use that when you're at the Department of Defense all the way the rest of your life. So when we have soldiers coming home 40, 50 years later from who knows what war, or Afghanistan mm -hmm. or wherever, mm -hmm. Vietnam, we can look at you and say, okay, you were exposed to this. Maybe it was a burn pit. Maybe it was Agent Orange. We've got you in a system that we can look up very easily and find out, okay, maybe the incidence of, of heart disease or diabetes is higher in this group we should compensate these people. Right now, we're just flying by the seat of our pants. And mm -hmm. the problem with the VA has a good system, but it's siloed. This VA system here can't communicate very well with the system in Florida or California, and veterans move around. And we're also finding that veterans are moving from the northeastern part of the country to the south and west. So we have to have the VA more adaptable to the new uh, demographics of the country. So then in a nutshell, mm -hmm. I, I've just, Summarize what yes. we did in two years, but a lot more too. There's a lot, a lot of great stuff we did. Wow, I could just sit here and listen to this all day because it's great to hear that so many things are being done for our veterans. Bipartisan, I want to add. You That's hear a great. lot of partisan rancor in Washington. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people, look, 
park that stuff at the door. VA Mission Act, the health care, how veterans get their care outside the VA, I sat down with every member of the committee mm -hmm. and I said, what would you like to see this, this bill look like? When you go home, mm -hmm. whether you go to Massachusetts or you go to rural Tennessee, what do you want it to look like? How do you want it to serve veterans? And it took us a year and a half to work it out. We worked with our Senate colleagues. I want to give them a shout out. And I think we've got a, a, a good piece of legislation. If it's implemented properly, it will be transformative for the VA. That's amazing. Thank you for doing that. Well, I really appreciate that. It's a privilege to do that. it. I, I, you know, I thought, how, how, can, how at this point in my life can I make a difference? I grew up at, near Fort Campbell, Kentucky, so I grew up around the military. And again, having served in the military, you just kind of look at things differently. You're, you're a military mom. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, than someone. It doesn't mean you're not patriotic. I mean, yes. my wife's never been in the military. But she's as patriotic as anybody. It doesn't have anything to do with your patriotism. You just kind of look at things differently. Well, I am proud of the country. My son, who is in the Air Force, grew up, he was very patriotic growing up. Very, yeah. And we're just a very patriotic family. Whether or not I had a son in the military, yeah. I'm proud of my country. Absolutely. And I'm a daughter of a, a veteran. Then I'll tell you about so we've just touched on the subject, but let's move on. Let's talk about health care, and we'll do that right after this break. So we'll be back in just a minute. Don't go anywhere, and we'll talk about health care with Congressman Phil Rowe.